they control him now they direct him now they pressurize him now it's not like you know the it's not commonly reported outside and for the church at corinth it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you such fornication as is not so much as named among the gentiles that one should have his father's wife. What? Yes, I need to explain. The father married his mother, and now he is growing up, he's becoming a teenager, and he's going beyond being a teenager, and the mother probably had died, and so the father married another wife, young wife. And so the son, who is now growing up, sees the wife of the father. And because, you know, that's the stepmother, and they've been relating together normally and all that, they go to the point that this growing young man, you know, sometimes so they join gang, and when they join the occult, and when they smoke this kind of thing, they can do anything. And so the young man went into the stepmother and committed fornication. You know, life just still continued. And the father himself has become so weak, maybe he's getting old and couldn't call the child to attention, couldn't discipline the child. I am old now, and if I do anything to this, um, you know, boy, this stepmother might say, he's going out. Okay, if he's going out, also will go out. And the man was afraid to be alone. Loneliness, isolation. And because of that, he stayed there. He wasn't happy, of course. And the information seeped out that this young man is living an immoral life, fornication with the stepmother. And the father could do nothing. He could, but he will not. Are we so used to evil that we see evil at a very doorstep inside the house, not doorstep outside? And yet now we cannot talk because we are getting old. And so Paul the Apostle wrote and said, deal with this. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, and ye are popped up. The gifts they had, the privileges they had, the outward things they were active in, they were proud and popped up and have not rather mourned. You've forgotten the, the message of the Lord Jesus, blessed are they that mourn. When we see evil, and when we see degradation, when we see pollution within our premises, and we cannot mourn, and ye have not mourned that he that has done such deed might be taken away. Taken away. The father should have taken that child away from his home. If you're old enough to do that, you're old enough to go and leave alone, and leave my wife, your stepmother alone. He couldn't do that. And the church, hearing that, or just gossiping and gossiping. They could not do anything. And Paul the Apostle said, they should have cast away and taken away from among you. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, For I verily, as absent in body, yet but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him 
that has done this thing. Then he tells us in verse 6, it says in verse 6, your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven, leaveness, the whole love. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, but them that are without, God judge them. Therefore, this one is within, put away from among you, or among yourselves, that wicked person. We're looking at number three here. Number three is decisively dealing with own members and loose manners. Charity begins at home. Discipline begins at home. Holiness, purity of heart should begin in your temple, in your heart, in your life. Decisively dealing with own members and loose manners. First Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 25. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate, self-controlled. In all things now they do each to obtain a corruptible crown. But we and incorruptible. Look at verse 27. <clears throat> In verse 27, but I keep my body under. I keep <clears throat> under my body. Here is Paul. And in writing to in writing another, he said, I, Paul, the aged, not too old, not even 70 at that time, but the stoning, the shipwreck, the fears within, fightings without, I dread that him, very old, even though it's not like 70, 80, 90, but Paul the aged. He said, even Paul the aged, I keep my body under. Thank you, Paul. He had read the story of Gideon, who controlled and commanded and fought the Midianites outside, but he could not fight the Midianites inside him. And so he said, I'm not going to go the way of Gideon. I keep under my body. Shouldn't every believer think like that? I keep under my eyes, my ears, my mind, members of my body, my feet, where I go to, my hands, what I touch, what I refuse to touch, I keep under my body that and bring it into subjection and bring my body, every member of my body, into subjection. You see those who are eager to control other people, they want to bring other people into subjection. Bring those Midianites into subjection. Bring those Canaanites into subjection. My brother, let that subjection start at home. And bring members of your body, your mouth, your tongue, bring that under subjection. Your weakness, personal weakness, bring that under subjection. Your old life, Bring that on the subjection. That is the secret of those who are really going to heaven. All the others are just religious people, religious fanatics. They're so fanatical, they must bring everybody on the subjection anywhere, everywhere. That doesn't get you to heaven. But I bring 
my body, members of my body, into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. We're looking at point number two now. Point number two, we're talking about the deeds and the destiny of Balaam the backslider. False prophet, yes. So say, yes, eventually, but first and foremost, the backslider. And, uh, you know, he died, and you're wondering, you don't need to wonder where he went. He went to the other side. He knew the final place and the destiny of the righteous. That's why he prayed, let me die the death of the righteous, and let my end be like his. Well, Balaam, you know, it's more than just mouthing the prayer. Must live the life of the righteous if we're going to die like the righteous. Must live the life of the righteous if we're going to spend eternity with the righteous people of God in heaven. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the deception and defilement through Balaam, the backslider. Number two, the deeds and the doctrine of Balaam, the bases, both base, 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 going down and down spiritually. In fact, at his time, was the basis to fall backsliders and sinners. Number three, the death and destiny for bonding with Balaam's. Were well, you so bond with Balaam? Friendly with Balaam? attached to Balaam and you know he's going wrong but you are bonded with him what's the death of such people and the destiny of such people look at number one number one the deception and defilement through Balaam the backslider uh, you know his story he had told the angel he said even though Balaam will give me all this house full of gold and silver. I will not depart from the watch of the Lord. Then he got to Balak. And Balak said, ah, I called you to cross the people. What are you doing? He said, I told you. And I mean it that even if you will give me the half of all the gold you have, money you have, this man you look at, look at me. I cannot deny the word of the Lord and the way of the Lord for your money, for your good. Well said, but I couldn't do that. Look at Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 15. In Second Peter chapter 2, verse 15, which are forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Gozo, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. He loved the wages of unrighteousness. It is just word of mouth. I cannot deny the Lord. I cannot go away from the Lord. Whatever position anybody gives me, prosperity, wealth, money, business, contact, whatever they give me, I am for the Lord. He didn't prove it. Prove it by the life you live. Prove it by the association you have. They were told in Jude chapter 1, verse 11. Jude 1, verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gain scene of Corey. You know, Balaam, he ran, he ran, he ran. <laughs> Balaam, why don't you slow down? Why are you running? What are you running for? Greedily. He I mustn't miss this from Balaam. It might be at the expense of destroying 
Israel, but I will have this. Running, running greedily. It's not enough to run. Anybody can run in front of my age. I can run, I can run here, run there, run there. I can, you know, sometimes uh, hand over the headquarters to keep people hands. Group pastors, reps, moderator, everyone. I know they've been with us for a long time. And I know they can effectively bless the church while I'm away. Yes, I know that. And I know we have, we'll preach the same doctrine. If I'm not here, they will do it. So I can leave the headquarters for some and run. But yes, pastor, brother, whoever you are running is not the issue the reason for running is the issue are you greedy of something are you running after something are you eager to get something you think you have not got that's the secret you can a person can be like Benham and be greedy and run because of covetousness. Let's watch it. And so the Lord is telling us not just run, examine the purpose of the running. Woe unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for a watch and perished against sin of Cory. Well, you came at number uh, two here. Number two, the deeds and doctrine of Balaam the busiest. Look at Revelation chapter two. Well, you came at verse 14. In verse 14, it says, but I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. You wouldn't think that Balaam was a teacher having doctrine. Yes, he was. And he taught. And his teaching was effective. He was the one that taught Balak. And the one that influenced Balak. But the doctrine was false. It was saying, introduce your women. You can't conquer those Israelites by weapons of war. Set your battle in array, get thousands of men. Your men will never conquer them. But can I counsel you? Can I teach you? Your women will conquer them. If you send men to fight against Israel, God can even send angels and he can fight against you. And one angel can get rid of 185,000 of your army. So going through that route, that trout, you never get them. But your women, let them expose themselves to your men. And your women, let them expose their anatomy and look as beautiful as a medianity woman could be and send them into their army. They'll forget themselves and God also will forsake them. That's the teaching Balaam gave. What teaching are you giving to other people by your word? by your action, by your dressing, by your appearance, by your maneuvering in the church. What message are you teaching? Are you giving to the people? And Jesus said, I have a few things against thee, because thou hast led, because thou hast there, them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught, who taught, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block 
before the children of Israel. This is the message of Jesus. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And Jesus said, and uh, to commit fornication. We're teaching holiness here. And he, by your action, by your dressing, by your talk, by your insinuations, you're teaching people, don't mind them. Talking about holiness, don't mind them. Teaching sanctification, and your focus and your aim at bringing down the message of holiness and sanctification. And then you influence whoever comes under your influence because they're taking you like their God, like their goddess. And they have taken you to be above the doctrine of the Bible. And you're teaching your own doctrine to weaken the church and to lead the church into fornication and adultery and to lead the church into uh, your wife did that send her away divorce her and we are coming over here we have just a few minutes and we emphasize that the man and the wife they are together until death do us part or maybe that counselor there knows what the husband has done and he said, come here. Are you so dense? So foolish? Your husband did that? Are you still there? And I go out of there. I'll show him the door out. You can't stand like that. And they take your word. And you break their family. And they take your word. And you make them more angry. Against their wife. Against their husband. You're like Balaam. You're teaching people in the church, contrary to what we hear at the central gospel, at the central pulpit here, at the headquarters. And Jesus said, I have somewhat against you. My friend, if you die in that condition, that by word of mouth, by dress and appearance, by using your local language proverb, by this and that, you try to weaken the church and you try to poison their mind against their teacher appointed and called and commissioned by God. Don't listen to him. When we're young, you know, we're just listening and listening. Now everybody knows the Bible. Uh -huh, I hear you. So don't listen to the GS or the pastor or anybody. This is the way to go. My friend, if you die in that condition, you will go to hell because the people, Christ himself is preparing, blessed at the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They'll say, no, they can be impure. They can do fornication. They can do whatever. They can disobey. And you promise them what Christ has not promised them. And they forget themselves. They don't even pay attention to what we're teaching anymore. If they perish, you, their counselor, will perish. If they perish, if they go to hell, even if they don't go to hell, if they buck up themselves and say, no, I can't do that. I came and I became born again all by myself and not about to listen to anybody that will get me back to the pollution, the corruption, the dirt, the defilement I used to have. Even if this time, because they realize themselves they want to get to heaven, you try to weaken them, recommend adultery to them, recommend fornication to them in your counsel, your teaching. If you die in that condition, you'll go to hell, you will not get to heaven. Balaam did not get to heaven, and the people that walk in the past of Balaam. Corrupting the people of God, they will not get to heaven. We're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the death and destiny for bonding with Balaam's. Balaam's, anyway. They may be on the television. They are Balaam's, they are backsliding, they are teaching false doctrine. You're bond with them. 
as death and destiny. They may be on the internet and they're now telling you that not everything Paul said is inspired of God and you buy that. You, you listen to them on the internet and they're now saying without holiness no man shall see the Lord. They said that's in the good old days but now everything is faith, faith, faith. Believe and whatever your life is, you die like this, you go to heaven, you're listening to them. The death and the destiny of those who bond with Balaam. We're looking at um, Jude, verse 1. Ch no, sorry, chapter 1, but from verse 11. In verse 11, woe unto them. No blessing, woe unto them. No blessedness, woe unto them. For they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error, the false doctrine, the sinful counsel of Balaam for reward and perished in the gain saying of Corey. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, these are spots in your fields of charity. You, you know these people, uh, they're not people that, you know, walk around with a, with a frown. They're people, they're outgoing. They're extroverts. And they come into the midst of the people of God and they're respected, they're honored. And they come with a smile and they carry themselves with as an unappointed influencer in the congregation. And their sports in your feast of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. They don't have any fear. Balaam did not have any fear. All those prophecies he gave, chapter 22, chapter 23, chapter 24, if he read those promises and the prayer he prayed, he had no fear of God. He's lost that for a long time. Just activity, activity, activity. And he was a candidate of hell. And it says, they feed themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds. And it says, trees whose fruit as withered, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, raging waves of the sea. Now, these people, they have double personality. When they feast with us, they're nice, they smile. They touch that, they touch they do just charisma. On the other hand, when something does not go the way they expect, and they see that the greed and the pursuit is going to a kind of elude them. Oh, they can't. Waves, raging, stormy, abusive, insulting. They can do anything. So they have those two sides. When they are happy, nice. When they don't, when they cannot have their way, raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars, okay. If I'm blocked in that place, wandering stars, they go to another. It's, they're not doing what they're doing because they love you so much and they want this for you, but. They are wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. The Lord save us. Amen. And the Lord preserve us. Amen. And your faith will not be in vain. Amen. 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 And all your standing uncompromisingly all these many years will not be in vain in Jesus' name.
Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. In Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 8. But the fearful, those who are fearful of Balaam, they know the will of God. They cannot do the will of God. Balaam is saying, go this way. And they fear, they fear Balaam more than they fear God. The fearful and unbelieving. And it says, and the abominable. Murderers. And the all mongers. That's another word for fornicators and adulterers. And sorcerers. And idolaters. And all liars. All liars. The people who fail to expose the whole truth, they suppress part of the truth and they make you believe the opposite of the truth. The liars. And it says, or oh, liars, it says they. And also, the people that make us believe a lie shall have their part in the lake which burn it with fire and brimstone. And you say, this which is the second death. Oh, second death, second death, second death. Yeah, the first death, we die in the flesh. We're buried. When we go up there, if we're believers, there's no lie, there's no hidden agenda, there's nothing, we go to heaven. But if we die, in adultery, in fornication, and we die in Adam, and we die in idolatry. If we die worshiping money, worshiping position instead of worshiping God, if we die like that, there's the first death, then we go to the other side uh, and the death of death. D squared, D to the second power. That death has no authority anymore, and the fellow will live forever and ever in the lake of fire. The Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord deliver me in Jesus' name. He will deliver you. But we'll break your bond with Bela. Whatever you lose. Whatever you are denied of, break your bond with Balaam and live like a real believer, not looking for anything except the glory of God. Well, you can at uh, point number three now. Point number three, the devotion and destination of Bible believers. That's who you will be. That's who I will be. Three things, look at number one. Number one, the conversion and consecration of Bible believers. Number two, the contention and conquest of battling believers. Number three is the continuation and commendation of bridegroom's bride of the bridegroom's bride look at number one number one is the conversion and the consecration of bible believers matthew chapter 18 reading from verse 1 matthew chapter 18 verse 1 at the same time came the disciples unto jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? You show me thinking of the disciples. Christ is talking about his death. He's talking about his agony. He's talking about the cross. He's talking about Calvary. And you are asking who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them verse 3 and in verse 3 it says he said verily 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 i say unto you except 
ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall in no case, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Looking for position, except you are converted and become like a little child who is not wanting to lord anything over anybody. Except you are converted. The conversion is just, not just a word of mouth. I'm converted, I'm born again, I'm saved. No, it will appear in your life. Look at this little child. Except you are converted. Except you are transformed. And you become like a little child. No private agenda. No pride. No bossing over anybody and not oh, not training over your father if there are children when is daddy going to quit like he, like absalom is uh -uh. getting stronger and stronger when is when is he going to leave so that absalom beautiful handsome son can take over if you're like that you'll not get to the kingdom of god and then I'm suddenly going to Ahithophel. Ahithophel, I have a plan to hash. Will you join me? Help me. And you are the right hand man before David, my father. First of all, if you quit and you join me, he'll be so sorrowful. The sorrow alone can kill him. Absalom, what if you die suddenly? And you're not able to get what you're looking for on earth and what you're looking for up above you lose everything and jesus said except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven look at verse 4 in verse 4 Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. amen. Another amen. amen. You know, the Lord has not deceived us. He tells us we have something to work on. Not boisterous over other people not ruling reigning over other people and not uh, you know a commander go this way go that way no that will not get me to heaven get you to heaven every one of us peter james john matthew philip everyone with gs and all our pastors included humble yourselves as this little child so you'll get to the kingdom of God. We're looking at number two. Number two here, contention and conquest of battling believers. Again, we need to remind ourselves, yes, we contend. Yes, we fight, but we're not fighting members of the body of Christ. No contention there. We're not fighting the doctrines of the Bible on salvation, sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism. We're not fighting doctrine. Remove your hand from there. We're not fighting the leader that God has placed over us to show us the light and show us the way and to lead us to heaven. There's no contention there. Let's stop all that. We're not fighting against God because woe to him that strives with his maker. All that kind of fighting will land us in hell. What's the contention then? What are we fighting about then? Jude chapter 1 verse 3. In Jude chapter 1 verse 3, it tells us, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you that and to exhort you that ye should 
earnestly contend not against your brother earnestly contend not against your pastor earnestly contend not against your counselor who is counseling you to get to heaven earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints that's a motor that's a guide that's a principle we got it from the scripture but many people have led all that they're not contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints that a child of god when he repents and believes he stops the old life if any man be in christ is a new creature all things are passed away and behold all things all actions all manners all conduct all dispositions are become new that's what we're to contend for but contending for religion contending for position contending for overcoming our leadership overcoming everybody suppressing everybody that's not the contention we're called to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints the lord help everyone in jesus name we're well, looking at number three here number three is the continuation and commendation of the bridegroom's bride the church the bride of christ the bridegroom and there's no fight between christ the bridegroom and church the bride even sometimes the church might be slow in understanding something christ does not contend the church might you know sometimes erroneously go into something false even something simple and yet christ the bridegroom will find a way of bringing back his bride, the church, where the church ought to be. And it's an example for us, husband to wife, wife to husband. No contention, no fighting, no separation, no long-standing unforgiveness attitude. Something happened, talk about it, pray about it, and then let it stop there. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. That's the mandate. That's the commandment. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. And as the Lord has commanded us, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it give me a good amen. amen in verse 26 it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it he wants to cleanse the church sanctify the church purify the church with the washing of water by the word verse 27 it says that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish verse 28 so all